Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Wednesday, October 16, 2013. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's jump right into the charts here. We're going to start off with the usual S&P 500 E-mini futures. And you'll see that the futures are catching a pretty sharp bid higher, trading up about 9 points at the moment to 1701 a con uh, per contract. Futures are back above that psychological 1700 level. Again, there's been a lot of flip-flopping with the political uh, rhetoric coming out of Washington. One day there's a deal done in, with the debt ceiling. Next day there's not. Nobody knows what to think, but we are coming down to the deadline. The deadline is tomorrow, October 17th. So the politicians basically are within a day to get a deal done. And the markets are saying that they will get some kind of a deal done, whether it's uh, you know a big deal or it's just a kick, uh, kicking the can down the road. We really don't know. But either way, expect volatility. We are also into the middle of what we call the options expiration for October. October expiration will be this Friday. So usually that makes for a volatile trading session um, both ways, on the long side, short side, and all around. So if we get a big up move, don't be surprised if we come back down. Uh, today is what we call Whipsaw Wednesday. So you should be expecting the unexpected. Moves can happen up, down, and all around. That's really the kind of market that we're in. Um, it looks like the Senate is trying to work out some kind of a deal, uh, but we'll see if the market, how it responds and, and, and what happens when there is, you know, some kind of legislation that comes up for vote. Right now, uh, it's just going to be choppy and sloppy, but that's why we follow the charts and really don't care what the politicians say at all. There are a few stocks in the news today. We're going to start off with Bank of America. Bank of America reported earnings this morning. Uh, the stock traded up initially. Now it's back down to around the 421 level, I don't see any upside in Bank of America. It, maybe it gets up to 1450. That that could be a possibility. But the only attractive level I see for this stock is around 1350, maybe even $13.40. But uh, the reality of it is a lot of uh, accounting magic went into these numbers. But that's neither here or near, near he, neither here nor there when we're looking at trading. Um, but I, I wouldn't touch BAC. I don't think there's much upside in the stock at all. Uh, a few other stocks that reported uh, last night were Intel Corp, Intel, the world's largest chip maker. Um, the stock right now is trading at 23.33. It pretty much closed at the same level yesterday. I think the stock maximum could have upside to 24. You'll see my line right here, and you can see that line got there after hours um, on initial push and before selling off. And now the stock's kind of in the middle of a range. Um, a level I would get attracted, though, to Intel would be around $22.26. So that is a good level, I think, for the stock. If it sells off down there, traders can look to scoop some up, in my opinion, around $22.26. Um, I'll be looking at the stock down when it gets to that level, um, which is about a dollar lower from current price. And if it does rally, I don't see the stock getting above 24 bucks. Uh, let's take a look at Yahoo. Yahoo was another one that reported uh, earnings last night. Uh, the stock closed yesterday at around $33.38. Today it's trading at $34.04. I can't make much out of Yahoo, so um, there's not a lot I'm going to do with it one way or the other. I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, in my opinion, you know, the stock could have a little bit more upside, but it's minimal at best at this stage of the game. The stock's been on a tremendous run really since late 2012. So, you know, at this stage of the game, it's a little bit long in the tooth. Not saying it can't go a little bit higher. I think there's, there's still a possibility of that happening, but there really is no play, in my opinion, for Yahoo at this stage of the game. Um, looking at another one today that is just getting hammered, I have a gap level for this. Hopefully it gets to our level, is Skyworks Solutions. Skyworks is just getting slaughtered on the vine here. Uh, the stock is down... What can you say? It closed at almost 90 bucks. It's trading at 80, you know, down about 10 bucks at the moment. Um, big, big move lower. But I do have some levels to pick this one up for a gap play, and those levels will be posted in the chat room at 9 a.m. So again, if you want the the the, the, the level for Stanley Black and Decker, SWK, come on over to uh, the chat room at 9 o'clock, and we'll release those levels to you. Um, there's a few other stocks that are out here, but most notably what you want to take note of today after the closing bell, we will have IBM. This is going to be a market mover. This is a market bellwether stock, at least in a technology department. Uh, IBM has been really, really beaten down. 
But right now, I'm not seeing a whole lot of strength in the stock chart. I mean, it could go to 192 after earnings, I suppose, but that would be about it, in my opinion. And then you have eBay uh, reporting earnings as well. So eBay will report earnings after the closing bell. So there's a lot on the earnings front. Earnings season is just getting underway. It's just heating up. We're going to get tons and tons of stocks now with earnings, and there'll be a lot of morning volatility. So it's a great time to participate in the intraday stock chat room. Uh, come over to the trading room, and uh, you'll see everything that we do. Um, looking at gold and oil this morning, uh, you do have oil trading down about 25 cents. Not that big a deal. It's trading just under 101. So oil is down a little bit. We'll take a look at the all-important USO. And what you'll see here is that the USO is trading right around 36.46, basically right where it closed yesterday. So uh, light sweet crude trading down just a touch today, um, just underneath the 101 level. Not really that big a deal. Gold futures are up about four and a half points to 1277.90, 1278 level. We'll take a look at the good old fashioned GLD here, which is a great proxy for gold. And you'll see this is trading at around 123.39. Price closed at around uh, 123.73. So um, GLD really not catching much of a bid, but nonetheless, it's hanging in there, and we'll see if um, GLD can get a bid. Right now, GLD does not look terrible, in my opinion. Um, I just don't see a real good setup to own it, but I, I personally am not very bearish on gold at all at this stage of the game. Uh, so we'll see how it plays out. But uh, either way, uh, there's really no setup here, but gold futures are trading up nearly $5. Um, so I think we're going to leave it here short and sweet today. Again, uh, we have some gap plays. They'll be posted up in the chat room. And after hours today, watch IBM and eBay. Again, IBM still looking weak on the chart, but it does have a potential upside momentum to 192. Right now, the market is somewhat euphoric um, just in the... In the thought of there being a debt ceiling increase and also the government reopening, uh, again, you know, we, we, we haven't had much economic data because of the government shutdown, but to be honest, I haven't missed it at all. Today you will, I believe, get um, national home builders or something like that, so that's not coming from the government, but there'll be an economic report there. But uh, it makes for better trading without these economic reports, to be honest, so um, no real loss in my opinion. With that said, everybody, I want to wish you all a great trading day, and we'll see you on the charts.